So what we have here is a new 2023 Ram 1500. It's a Sport Crew Cab 4x4. A uh, couple of nice real extra goodies on this particular one to make it pretty stand out and make it pretty sharp. It's got the um, leather bucket seats in the front, which are heated and cooled. The other nice thing was when you upgrade to the leather bucket, you get the power driver's seat as well as the power passenger seat. It has the uh, Level 2 Rebel Group, which gets you the in-floor storage bins in the back. It comes with a remote start. You also get your park sensors on the front and rear with that package. We added the dual panoramic sunroof, which is uh, basically the whole roof's uh, a sunroof, so it looks pretty cool. We'll show you that when we get inside. We added the sport hood, which uh, looks pretty cool. We'll take a look at that. Kind of gives it a kind of a unique standout look. Uh, bigger tank. It's got the 124-liter tank. They normally come, I think it's like 95 or 98 liters, so that extra... 25% makes a big deal. You can go just a little bit longer when you're pulling a trailer or you don't have to stop and get gas as often. It's got the hitch uh, trailer brake controller in it as well as the uh, 392 gears with the anti-spin rack. So, so if you're going to be pulling a trailer, you know this would be a good one to take a look at. So across the front, being the sport, uh, you can see the, the grill is all painted to match. I'm just going to set my clipboard down over here on top of the little hydro meter over here in the corner. Uh, all right, so let's take a look. So this here is all painted to match. So this blue here matches the paint of the blue up top. You'll also see that they kind of paint the inset in towards the RAM logo. Really makes it look sharp. LED headlights. they got the strips up at the top here that light up for your daytime running lights. Good bright headlights. You know, good visibility in the dark. Across the front, these are the park sensors we were talking about. These little fellers here. So there's, these, there's a circle here. There's another one over there. A couple more on the other side. Basically, if you're um, about to drive over something when you're going really slow, this thing's going to start beeping at you. So uh, say you're trying to park in your garage at home and you've got to get really close to the wall in order for the truck to fit, these beepers are going to trip and tell you when you're getting close to the wall and let you know that you're, you're nice and close and it's time to stop before you bash into the thing and buff your, buff your paint on your bumper. So that's what that's all about. Up top here, so this is the sport hood. You can see it's got these little louvers here. You also get the extra louvered look up here, a little, little uh, logo here. Uh, E-Torque, okay, so what this engine has, there's a big battery pack behind the back seat. And what it does is uh, when, you're, when, you, when you're at stop at a stop sign or in stop and go traffic with your foot on the brake, the vehicle automatically shuts off. And then what it does is it uses that battery in the back to spin a belt, which turns the cam and the engine to uh, to launch your vehicle so you don't engage in the starter every time it starts and stops so it's a little easier on the you know the flywheel and your starter of course because you're not using it all the time and the other nice thing about it is you get that extra battery power which is putting a ton of torque down on the on the road so i think it's like another 110 foot pounds of torque i think on the hemi v8 so it's quite a bit of torque uh so off idle uh you've got way more power to pull your trailer uh you can I guess you could do a burnout better, you know, if you want to do a burnout. So this is, there's some things there that are uh, that are kind of nice to have with that e-torque. It's um, you don't really notice it engaging and disengaging, um, but it is it is a little bit more peppy out of the hole. If you, you don't really notice it until you got a lot of weight on the back though when you're pulling. So, but it is nice to have. Nice 20 inch rims. Uh, they get the black with the sport package, so these all kind of match up. Also with the sport package, of course, is all the black badging. So. Any of the badging on the vehicle says the Rams and the back logos on the tailgate and stuff, they're all going to be done in that satin black finish. Nice tire. They're good. They're a Bridgestone, so a popular brand name. Decent tire. They're like an all-terrain, all-season type idea. Um, kind of a good all-around tire. Uh, you know, if you're in tons of mud, you may want to get a dedicated mud tire. If you're in tons of uh, ice and snow and stuff, you may want to get dedicated tires for the wintertime probably not a bad idea they, they handle it a little bit better but this is a good multi-purpose tire if you're just driving around and you know on highways and going to edmonton and back that sort of stuff uh keyless entry uh, it has the um remote proximity keyless entry on this particular one so the keys are in it right now so it won't lock it won't let me lock the keys in it but if you normally if i have the keys in my pocket and i press this button it locks the doors for you and then to unlock the doors all you do is put your hand in here and as long as the truck can sense the keys nearby, it's going to let you unlock the door. So inside, we got power seats. you got forward and back, power recline for the passenger. It also has a power lumbar support for your lower back. And that's just a little airbag in here that just kind of pushes out, gives you a little bit more back support. Nice seats. They're all done in a leather. 
lots of extra stitching. Uh, they mix and match the materials a little bit, so they look kind of, you know, breaks it up a little and makes it look a little higher quality. Double stitching, you can kind of see it there. There's two rows instead of the single row. That's just going to stand up better over time. Same with the headrest. You get the double stitching on the side. And these are adjustable, too. You can kind of see how I pivot that headrest forward. So it just gives you a little bit more head support if you're driving on a, on a long road trip. Uh, you can kind of knock that ahead a little bit. Um, I've used it a couple of times. I prefer kind of just to leave it where it normally is, but everybody's different. They have a different ways of getting comfortable. Um, little back pocket in here for some storage. You can kind of lay some things in there, you know, store it out of your way. Glove box, this just pops open. Inside here, you got a little shelf. It's got a liner that comes out so you can clean something. If you spill anything in there, you can get your gunk out of there, no problem. And then down here is your main glove box. So your owner's manuals and everything are in there. Um, this is a little... Uh, cover plug so if you take your tailgate off you're going to have some exposed wires for where the camera wiring comes to the to the tailgate you just kind of clip these on there and it just keeps them from getting damaged don't see too many people taking their tailgates off nowadays but if for some reason you want to do that and go on a longer road trip you're good to go on the doors um a little carbon fiber got some chrome in here some vinyl lots of nice touch-ups with the trim good map pockets and storage down below so lots of areas you can kind of store some junk out of the way in the back seat, a couple things I want to point out with the uh, level two package. So for starters, um, I guess well, well, we'll look at the floor. I'll show you what the differences are when we get there. So these rear headrests, these fold down by pressing that button there. And the idea being that if you don't have any passengers in the back, just lay these down. And then when you're looking out your back window, you don't have the headrest blocking your view. So it makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on behind you. It's got a power sliding rear window. Rear defrost is built right into there as well, so um, and this is power operated, just opens and closes. It's kind of a nice feature. Um, you know, a couple of times I've used it. You know, if I bought some trim molding and stuff for when I was working on my house at home, you can slide that ahead, and then the trim can kind of lay in on top of the headrest, and then you can drive it home without it hanging out the back of the tailgate. I've done that. Uh, the other thing, the main reason I use it is when I'm driving, I can open my driver's window. And you get that buffeting sound where it kind of pounds on your ears, that boop, 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 boop noise. If you just crack open that back sliding window, it just eliminates that because it sucks the air in from the back of the window and it kind of blows in over your shoulder and then out the, uh, out the window on the side. Makes for a little more comfortable road trip. Pull down armrest, you got a couple of cup holders in here. We can flip that up out of the way. Now you got a little bit more seating capacity so you can sit three people back here for a total of five. This here is what we're talking about uh, with the floor divider. Okay, so you can see this kind of folds over and back. And that little plastic tab here just goes through that hole and then locks it in place if you want to keep it in one spot. And then you'd have a little bit smaller storage area. You can also flip it forward the other way, and it just makes it a bit bigger area. So that's part of that level two package we talked about. The other thing you get is these in-floor storage bins. So when you open these up, there's quite a bit of storage in there. These lift out, okay, so if you do spill some gunk in there, okay, you can see there's still the rest of the tubs in there, but you can take these removable tubs out and clean them pretty easy. Um, great place to store stuff. Extra work gloves, tow ropes, safety chains, all kinds of good stuff. So there's lots of good reasons to, to you know, store th things in there. The nice thing about them is when you, you break down and you need that stuff, you, you've got it in your truck. You're not looking around trying to find it. Uh, these little hooks pop up gives you a place to tie some stuff off to so if you had something really valuable back here and you didn't want it sliding around you can use these to tie it off and, and uh, they're pretty strong you know and they can handle quite a bit of torque on them I mean you're not gonna lift the car with it or anything but uh, they are kind of nice to have and there's two more on the other side as well so you can kind of uh, crisscross everything to tie it off rear, <coughs> the rear heater controls or pardon me the rear uh, uh, USB port controls sorry are in here there's some fan controls here, too. You can decide where you want the air to blow and open and close the AC vents. The uh, heat comes through these little vents here underneath the seat, these little holes there. That's where the rear heat comes from for the back passengers. USB ports so the kids can charge their cell phones up. They can also open this up, and there's a little plug in here. So you can uh, uh, you know, run like a laptop or you know, kids want to plug their iPads in, they can do that. Or you can use it for charging up your cordless power tools, you know, like we got some DeWalt tools or whatever. Uh, I believe they only work when the vehicle's running. That's uh, one of the downsides. So if you do want to charge your DeWalt tool, you got to kind of leave your truck running to do it. Um, but it's more or less just to give you the flexibility of, uh, you know, playing with devices when you're driving down the road, that sort of stuff. 
A little bit more storage here. There's a little mop pocket in here for, you know, throwing some junk in the back. On this side here, same thing with the rear doors. You know, we've got the same trim as that we had to look at the front. So everything matches, right? You're not going to hop from the back, from the front seats to the back seats, and then have, like, a different type of a door trim. I've seen that in some of our competitors' vehicles, and it looks kind of tacky. So this looks a little bit nicer. So everything matches. you got your power windows, another storage pocket down here, map pockets down below. Another little cup holder down there for a water bottle or something. On the back, let's take a look at some stuff here. The DTs, they come with these inner fender liners. That's these little plastic tubs here. Those are great to have. Uh, they stop the, stop the rocks on the back here from pinging around inside and beating up the inside of your box. Uh, if you ever look at, uh, if you're in a parking lot and you walk past an older Ford truck and it's got these big circle, blister circles on them, that's what's causing it. It's rocks that have come in from the inside and pinged it and it's kind of crack the paint and then they just blister and blow open like that with the with the like they look like little loony toony holes missing paint this is going to help prevent that from happening right so because the rocks can't get to it because the tubs are going to stop it uh also we added these uh, rear mud flaps okay so that's something we did on the pdi um uh, like to put those on there just to protect the rear paint plus it's uh make sure you don't get any tickets from the rcmp for for not having rear mud flaps on there uh we include that in the price that you see online uh, so, but if you go to our website at BigLegsDodge.com, there's the, the whole breakdown on the pricing of it for you. So if you want to have a look at that, you can. On the back, uh, a couple of tailpipes coming out the back, uh, right through the rear bumper. So instead of tucking them out the side, we bring them out through the rear. Just makes things look way cooler. So this is a single exhaust. It's twinned on the, on the back end, but uh, just looks cool. It's got a bit of a rumble to it as well. Um, not as loud as you're going to get with the GT package with the cold air intake and the passive rear exhaust. So it's not quite that loud, but it does still sound good. Like when you put your foot into it, you can hear something, although it's pretty uh, tame compared to the other one. Rear backup sensors, see the little circle there, another one over there. Um, nice thing about those is uh, same thing as the ones that we looked at on the front. So if you're backing up and you're about to run over something, say there's a bicycle or something laying behind you, these little guys are going to beep and let you know, before, hopefully before you run over it and damage anything. Trailer hitch. Got a little safety change you can kind of hook in over there and there. Uh, so if you pull in a trailer, you're good to go. You've also got your wiring harness. There's the four pin down below the bigger one if you're pulling the trailer with electric brakes. This little cover pops off. In behind there is your access to your, uh, you slide your rod in there and you can lower your spare tire uh, if you need to get at it. So that's what that's for. Once again, that black badging we talked about, all the Ram logo, nice little black badging there as well. Same with the sport on the other side, just to kind of finish everything off. I don't know if you noticed or not, but when I dropped that tailgate, it lowered itself down. There's a little shock absorber built into here, and when you let it go like that, it's just, uh, I don't know, it's maybe, it's not very long. It's maybe six or eight inches, just a tiny little guy. And what it does is it just lowers it down so it doesn't, uh, you know, thump and go bang when you drop it. It's just kind of a nice feature. Ours are nitrogen filled as well. Uh, so the nice thing about that is it'll, it should maintain that drop just like we had it at no matter how cold it is. Some of our competitors use an oil-based shock absorber in there, and it uh, it doesn't lower as easy. And it kind of, you know, because oil gets cold and more viscous, the, the colder it is, it'll drop your tailgate a little bit lower. Ours won't do that as much. The, the, the nitrogen helps offset a lot of that. A little tie-down hooks. You can kind of see they got one in each corner. Okay, so right there, right there. There's two more at the front. So if you got, like, your dirt bike in the back and you got to strap it down or, you know, any kind of bigger cargo, it's going to make it a lot easier to do that. You'll also notice that on top of the box rails, we've got the protective covers. These are standard on all the ramps, okay, so you don't have to, but I'd like to point it out. Just, you know, hopefully these get damaged if you're loading cargo in and out instead of your paint getting damaged because it's a lot easier just to buy a new cover, snap it in place rather than going out into a body shop and get a whole bunch of paint. If you look at the tailgate, you'll notice how it's quite a bit wider in here. The reason why they do that, if you take a look at the top of the roof, you can kind of see where the rear backup light is up top there, where that little red part is and that little shark fin antenna. That's your that's your radio antenna and for your satellite radio and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, you notice how it's got a bit of a V. So what it does is it dovetails the air through that V, channels it to the back, and it lands on top of this tailgate. The reason why this tailgate's wider is it creates downforce in the back end, so it gives you a lot better handling. The other thing it does is it improves your aerodynamics quite a bit, so you should get better fuel economy because you're not, you know, dragging wind as much. Anyway, that's the that's the design feature that they put in when they were when they were building the truck. 
Okay, let's take a look inside the dip passenger side here, the driver's side rear door. Kind of see everything's laid out the same. Some more of those tow hooks. Underneath here, there's another one of those storage bins. This rear seat lifts up as well. You've got some more storage over here. There's also quite a bit of storage underneath the seat. If you look, it goes all the way back to the to the uh, back of the cab here. So there's quite a bit of an area in there for some storage. In behind this felt panel, that's where your your um, your rear battery pack is. Okay, for the e-tor. All right, let's take a look at the front now. Uh, we're going to go on the driver's side. So you open the uh, sun visor. You can see the whole roof is glass. Maybe up top here, you can see how how big it is. Um, Nice feature. Uh, if you're driving along, it's almost like you're sitting in a convertible sometimes. Like this front panel piece from here to here opens up. That back piece is fixed. It doesn't move. It just stays there. But this power sunroof will pop up and slide back in towards the to the rear glass. But it really makes for a well a nice open airy feeling when you're driving. Power locks, power windows, power mirrors. These mirrors power fold. So if I press this little button in there. You can see the mirrors are power folding in. I'm going to press it again. They're going to power fold back out again where they belong. Uh, nice feature to have if you're ever in the city, underground parking. You know, they make those things for little wee tiny cars all the time, like for guys driving those little Civics and stuff. It, it's a little hard to park in the spot sometimes. So when you get parked and you go to get out of your vehicle, your mirror's in the way and you can't walk past it to get out into the main parking lot, you can just fold those in and there's just less chance of, you, you know, gives you more room to walk by and, other people hopefully aren't going to bash your mirror when they're trying to get into their car kind of thing. Um, power pedals. So I'm just going to move the camera down here so you can see them. So this here button, it moves your power, your brake pedal and your gas pedal forward and back. Nice thing about that is if you're fairly short, you can pull the pedals towards you, and it allows you to get a little further away from this airbag. Um, uh, this is the new two-stage uh, generation airbags. Um, what they do is they deploy at two different levels, so it's a little bit safer anyway, but you still want to get further away from the airbag, so if it does pop and deploy, it's not going to, you know, hurt you. Automatic headlights, as soon as it's dark enough, your headlights are going to automatically turn on. we got some fog lights here. We've also got your, uh, which you can turn off and on through there. They only work on low beam, just so you're aware. Um, of course, you'd, why would you want fog lights on high beam? It's, it's just going to make it even harder to see, so... The, uh, the the low beams work good for that. And then this turns on the light in your box. So that's that light up by that shark fin. You can turn that on, and then you can see what you're doing in the in the box when you're working. Dash brightness here for your speedo and your gauges. That's going to control this new digital dash layout that we have for this year. So these buttons over here control the digital dash. We're going to go through all the features and stuff that you can play with there. And these these buttons here, this these top ones uh, are for... I'm making phone calls and that sort of stuff. And this is a cascade button. So I'm just going to press that real quick and show it to you. So what it does is it changes your dash layout to give you kind of a summary of all the screens at the same time. So you got your fuel economy, you've got your trailer brake controller, the radio station, your tire pressure. I mean, you can change all these settings within each scroll setting, which I'm going to show you. But it's just kind of an overall summary of what's going on with your vehicle. Over here, you got your gear limiter. Okay, so this has got the eight-speed automatic transmission. When you turn this dial and put it into drive, okay, just put your foot on the brake. Now you're in drive and you're good to go in your automatic transmission. But you can use this to give to tell the transmission how many gears it's allowed to use. So, for instance, if you're going down a steep hill or something, you can use that to downshift and let the engine hold you back. Or if you don't want it to shift out of first gear for some reason, you can just say, well, I only want you to use first gear when you take off, and then it won't shift out of first. It'll just stay there. Two-wheel drive, 4x4 four four auto, 4 high and 4 low. Two-wheel drive is what you're going to want to drive around the summertime, obviously. It's just easier. Your front end's not spinning. You're not wasting gas. Uh, it's just easier on the vehicle. 4x4 four four auto, you can hit that button. You can use it. Uh, where you want to use that is when the roads are a little bit icy, kind of snowy, kind of dry, you know, kind of thing. They're kind of crappy. Uh, then you let the vehicle decide if it needs to be in 4x4 four four or not. Now, your fuel economy isn't as good when you're in 4x4 four four auto as it is in two-wheel drive, but it's easier on the system because if you try to drive around in 4x4 four four high, it locks all your four-wheel drive together, and your, your drive line's binding up. This doesn't let your drive line bind up unless you need it. Four high is what you're going to want to use when you go off-road because now you've locked all your four-wheel drive together, so everything's spinning all at the same speed or, you know, you're doing your four-wheel drive stuff. 
Whereas if you're in 4x4 four four auto, often the muck and the dirt and the mud is engaging, disengaging, engaging, disengaging, and it's hard on the system, right? So you want to use this on the in dirt and mud. You want to use this on the highway. You want to use this on the highway when the roads are good. And then four low is if you really need like a ton of extra torque or, you know, you're pulling a stumps out of the ground or something. I don't know. You're doing something crazy where you need a lot of torque, you're going to use that button. Auto start stop, we can disable that just by hitting this button. Uh, nice thing about turning the auto start stop off is let's let's say you're stuck in traffic and your vehicle's you know every time you take your foot off the brake it's restarting. Uh, for some reason, let's say you decide you don't want it to do that. Don't know why you'd want to do that. It's kind of kind of one of the nice features on the vehicle. But let's say for instance you don't want it to start stop, you can just disable it by hitting that. On the armrest, oh, here's a key fob. I guess we could show you that lock, unlock, and remote start. Nice big armrest with the Rams logo. This lifts up. It's got a nice storage tray in here. You lift this up again. There's even more storage down below. This goes down quite far. It's got a little divider bar we can flip up. That way, if I got stuff sitting at the front of the console, it's not going to slide to the back. And when you go looking for it, you're rooting around trying to see it. Uh, like I said, a little tray in the bottom. This just lifts out as well. It's a rubber insert, so if you want to clean it, you can. Also got some hooks here. Uh, if you go to Staples, pick yourself up some, uh, well, any office supply store. they got those little file folders with the metal hooks on the ends. You can just kind of hang them in there, and you can use that like a divider system. So if you're using this as like a work office, you can kind of keep your receipts in there, keep everything neat and tidy. And then when you get home, you can kind of give it to your accountant to sort stuff out. So that's kind of handy as well. In the center console, uh, cup holders and coin holders. This lifts up, and... Uh, if you want to take it out, you can spin it around as well and put it back in, um, you know, depending on how you want it to lay it out. The nice thing about the removal part, though, is when you spill coffee on it, because you're going to, because that's where your Tim Hortons sits right here, it's going to spill coffee in there, and then you can take it out and clean it one day when you get around to it. A couple cup holders. This slides back. More storage down here. So this is the front part of the console. Same thing. It's got the liner that comes out. You just lift this plastic tab, and this whole thing lifts out for cleaning. Another PowerPoint to plug your laptop in. Over here, there's some more places for your cell phone. If you just set it in here, this little rubber stopper pushes the bottom of your phone into this little hole that's here. It's even got a spot where your cord can plug in uh, so it doesn't, you know, in the bottom of your cell phone so you can charge it while you're driving. Uh, keeps it from flapping all over the place. Um, I, I use it virtually every time I hop in my truck. That's where I stuff my cell phone, just so I know where it's at. Up top, you got a little tray here. You see there's a little lip in there. You can keep your pens in there. It, kind of hard to show in the camera angle, but you can kind of see where it is. But anyway, there's a spot there for your pen. USB ports, you can plug your cell phones in. Auxiliary input, same thing, a different way of getting your music into the phone. Electric brake controller, adjust your gain, use your brakes. Uh, so it's all built in. You know, you don't have to buy a, one of those cheesy aftermarket uh, brake controllers to kind of bash your knee on the whole time you're driving. It's nice and out of the way. Uh, traction control for the, you can disable that. So let's say you're in, uh, you know, a deep snowbank or something. You want to spin your wheels. For some reason, you're going to have to turn your traction control off because the truck's not going to let you spin your wheels, okay? So allow, that allows you to override that. You can also activate your tow haul mode if you want. So if you're pulling a big trailer, you can just turn that on. And that's going to change your shift parameters. It's just going to make it shift better and pull that trailer better. It's going to, you know, like it's going to delay shifting up. And it's going to downshift more aggressively when you're going down hills and stuff. So, you know, it's just better for pulling. And then those sensors on the front and the rear, you can turn those off by hitting those buttons. Because uh, sometimes it'll, you know, beeping at you when you're trying to hook up the trailer and stuff. It's kind of annoying. So let's take a look at the 12-inch touchscreen before we get to the new dash. I want to kind of might as well work away that way. So on this buttons here, you've got all your heat controls are here and your fan speed controls. You've also got manual buttons over here for the heat controls for the passenger, defrost, air conditioning, all that kind of stuff. So you can use these touch buttons if you want rather than going in through the touch screen. Uh, if we access the touch screen, so this is our main homepage that kind of comes right from the factory. You've got a, a nav up here and your radio stations down there. But you can also add pages. You can change your layouts if you like. You can go in here and decide what you'd like to be on your screen. So I'm going to put my radio stations here. On this side, I'm going to put my climate control. Over here, I think I'll put my heated seats. And here we'll put, uh, I don't know, my favorite phone calls, people I'm going to call. So if my phone was paired, all my favorites would show up on there. Uh, it kind of gives you like a little quick.
quick layout so you can access your stuff a bit easier. And then you can still scroll through the screens. If you decide you don't want a screen anymore, you can go in there and just delete it. Now it's gone, you know, and, and you can reprogram it and set it up. Basically what the gist of it is, is it's super customizable, that home screen. So if you find yourself scrolling all the time trying to find something, just change your home screen and then it'll get the layout the way you like it. Radio stations, um, this is what we're listed into. These are all the different sources you can use to get your music into the stereo. So you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM if you're subscribed to it. I think you get like a year free or something like that. Uh, you also get to your Bluetooth device. If you've got Apple CarPlay, uh, it'll show up on here as well. Alexa, USB ports, one or two. So tons of ways to get your music in here to, to, so you've got something to listen to. Um, you can also access your audio settings through here just by hitting this button. So here's some neat stuff. You can change the volume of everything. So you've got the volume of your radio. You can change the volume of your phone calls, your nav instructions, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you can sit here and you can play with uh, your interfaces with the vehicle. So if you want them to be quieter or louder, you can kind of play with all that stuff. Comfort controls are basically the same as these buttons. It's just a digital version of it in here. Um, you can also turn your heated seats, your cooled seats off and on. You know, like in the summertime, you can turn that on. What these are is a little fan underneath the seat, and it just blows cool air through the little holes in the in the uh, in the leather. Kind of cools you off when you're driving on a hot day. Um, you can also have auto mode. It's got uh, which is normally what I use. So I just set the temperature that I'd like the vehicle to be at. So right now I've got it set at 20.5. You can use these buttons, or you can grab this and slide it up and down if you want. You can do it that way. Whatever, whatever is easiest. You can also tap the up-down button. So there's lots of ways to adjust it. But bottom line is, is normally I just use the auto mode, let the vehicle decide what needs to happen, because it'll decide how hot the air needs to be, where it needs to blow, all that kind of stuff, how much fan speed. Just, I just let it do its thing. Nav screen, nice big nav. And I'm going to show you on the center dash, too. There's a nav screen there, too, which is pretty cool. But anyway, so nice big nav. You can access your road maps and stuff like that. You can see further ahead. You can zoom in and out, so, if, so when you're using the factory now, it makes it a lot easier to see what you're doing. Really like using this when I'm lost in the city, which is pretty much every time I go to Edmonton, um, because it tells you, you can see a long ways ahead. It's easy for me to read when I have to turn, all that kind of stuff. It's not like I'm trying to look at my little phone screen. Pairing your phone. Typically what I recommend everybody does now is download Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Because what it'll do is it'll when you look when you pair your phone up, it's going to mirror your phone onto the touch screen. Way easier to use, you, 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 particularly if you're more comfortable with the interface. Uh, you don't have to learn anything. But if you don't want to do that, you don't have to. You can just pair your phone up and then let the truck make your phone calls and stuff for you. And it works fine as well. I just prefer Apple CarPlay. It's just my preference between the two. Uh, here's all your controls. You can access your backup camera. So now you can see, you can also just put it in reverse to access your camera too. But it gives you like a nice dotted line, tells you where you're going to end up. As I turn the steering wheel, well, I guess i got the grid lines fixed. But you can turn these grid lines on, so when you move your steering wheel, they'll move and show you where you're going to end up. We can also zoom in if we want. Oh, what's going on there? Whoop, here we go. Let's try that again. Zoom in. There we go. So now you need to zoom in. Now you can see the trailer hitch. So when you go to back up underneath your trailer, you can zoom right into where your ball is and stuff. It makes it a lot easier to hook your trailer up. Uh, last screen, uh, we got some settings in here. This is where you program your vehicle. Um, you can set up, like, do you want your temperature in Celsius? Do you want it in how long do you want your lights to stay on when you shut it off? You can access your driving assistance, like how loud do you want those park sensors to beep at you? Uh, do you want the brake assist on so when you're backing up and you're about to run over something, it'll actually put the brakes on for you so you don't have to worry about it. You can turn that off and on through there if you like. It's all kinds of stuff that you can set up. So chances are pretty good if there's something on the vehicle that you're not liking, uh, we can just go in there and change it on those settings. Okay, so let's go over the new digital dash now. I want to go through these screens. So a couple things. So this is kind of the main page. You've got your temperature gauge over here. On the other side, you've got your fuel gauge, nice layout, compass, temperature gauge up top here, what the temperature is, and then your speed. You've also got your tack on the bottom. If I scroll over, you can also update this gauges now. So now you've got your a digital tack up here, normal speedometer on the right-hand side. This is kind of more familiar to people that have the, 
the current truck. This is kind of the layout, so these are real gauges instead of a digital representation. Next screen we got to, this is all your vehicle information. So your tire pressures, all your oil temperatures, all that kind of stuff. Any kind of, anything to do with your vehicle, fuel economy. Obviously the fuel economy is not very good right now because it's been idling. But kind of gives you kind of a layout of anything that's going on with your vehicle. And just kind of get, pops it up on the screen so you've got some, some information there. Tripometers, there's two trips. So you can see in the last two hours we've gone 9.4 kilometers. Obviously that's why your fuel economy is no good. But we can reset that one, okay? But we still got our original data over here that you can access. So the nice thing about that is you can keep track of two different trips at the same time. Digital nav. So this is a really cool feature for this year, for 2023, with this screen. So it's taken the nav screen and it's throwing it up on here as well. So if you want to use that for your directions, you can. Really kind of like that. I don't. I've never really driven with the nav there, so I don't know if I'd use it or not. I, I kind of. I really like the big center screen now, but hard to say. Maybe I'll I try it. I have to try it before I can comment on it. Trader tilt. This is your distance. Uh, what it does is this little tripometer here keeps track of how many kilometers you've been pulling your trader. So if you've got an RV and you look down at that, and this guy says 5,000 kilometers on it, well, maybe it's time to get the brakes looked at. You know, maybe get somebody to look at the bearings on it, that kind of stuff. So just gives you an idea of how, much, how many kilometers you've been pulling that trader. Trader tilt screen. This is kind of more your standard one. It tells you your gain settings as well as how much juice you're sending to the rear brakes. You can see as I step on the brake, it's, it's telling me how much power it's going to send to the send to the trailer for braking. So it just kind of tells you what's going on with the trailer brake controller. Audio just tells you what's playing on the radio station, name of the artist, radio station, that kind of stuff. Stored messages. Uh, this would be like check engine lights, low tire pressure lights, your key fob battery is dead. Uh, all that kind of stuff. It'll show up there, and, and you can go in, and, and uh, when you bring it into the shop, you kind of, you, you can say, hey, listen, there's a couple of check engine lights there and stuff I'd like you to look at, so they can figure out what's going on. Screen setup. What we can do is you can change these. So right now it says we're going to do the upper right, and you can see it's highlighted this part here. So what we're doing is be changing the temperature. I'm going to go change the upper left because I don't like a compass. I don't care what direction I'm heading. It doesn't really matter to me. But I'm going to change that from the compass to the time. There we go. So now I got the time there. So now I set the clock up there. So now I got the time, the temperature. But you can change everything. You can change that sport logo up there. You can take. You can decide what kind of gear settings you're in. Like right now we're in park. You can change that selector to change uh, odometer. You can change the layout of that. Do you want like in decimal points or not? So all kinds of customizability is basically what we're looking at here that I, I, I kind of wanted to show you. So the nice thing about that is it's, once again, if you're, if you're looking down at this digital gauge, it's not giving you the information that you want to see, you can go ahead and change it. So the last thing I want to talk about is this overhead stuff here. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, this just slips down. A good place to keep your sunglasses. It's got a nice felt liner in there so you can keep your sunglasses from getting damaged. And it keeps them, tucks them out of the way when you need them, you got them. This opens and closes your sunroof. This tilts it, um, or pardon me, this, yeah, this open and closes your sunroof. This is how you tilt your sunroof open. This open and closes the, there's a, a vent. And I'll actually, I might as well close it and show it to you. You can kind of see it slide and close there. So it's just a, it's just a fabric cover that blocks out the sunroof. And that way you're not going to be, you know, if you're driving along and it's getting a little too hot for some reason or something like that, you can just close that and it'll just cool it down. Um, and then this is for open and closing your sliding rear window. This controls your dome lights. They'll turn off and on if you want them to, like these interior lights when you open your doors and that kind of stuff. Two buttons. you got a blue button and a red button. Red button's SOS. If we hit that, it's going to phone the cops and tell them to come here. So you're only going to hit that if in case of an emergency. Uh, and the other one is Sirius XM Guardian app. Uh, if you've got this app, it allows you to, um, there's some stuff you can get through Sirius XM. Basically, the advantage of it is it allows you to put an app on your phone, and then you can use your phone to, you know, start your truck, unlock and lock your doors, figure out where your truck's at, get alert if your vehicle's out of a certain area that you've set, let you do all kinds of things. It's a subscription-based. I think it's free for three months, and then after that it's, I think it's 25 bucks a month after that, I believe. Anyway, if you're interested in it, I, I recommend everybody download it, put it on their phone, try it, see if you like it. And then if you find that you're not using it, 
you know, then you don't have to subscribe to it. But who knows? Maybe you use it and you really like it. I put it on my phone and never used it. I, to me, it, I thought it was kind of, you know, I can do everything without it because I, I can always see my truck where I'm parked. My wife has it on her truck, loves it. She can't, you know, she works at the hospital and she can't see her truck when it's parked outside. So when she gets off, you know, night shift there, she can just start it on her phone, starts her truck up, and then she wanders out and it's good and warm. Where otherwise she has to kind of wander around and hit the remote start. Because you need to, for a remote start to work, you've got to have a clear sight line. You've got to be able to kind of see your vehicle for it to work. So, so she likes it and used it quite a bit. So everybody's different, but I recommend everybody try it, and then you can decide if there's any value there for you or not. Okay, I thank you for taking the time to listen to our video. If you're looking to get yourself into a new truck, you know, we'd love to be the place you choose to buy it from. So give us a call. Let's get together and have a cup of coffee.